The second text, of course, is from the gospel lesson for this day, for what was just read. And it is an interesting gospel. I think if you look at it a little bit closer, we can get into it a little bit. Because Mark is telling us more about Jesus by showing something about him. That he has power over unclean spirits. The ironic twist to all of this text, if you were paying attention and you read it, if not reread it a little bit, is that it was a demon that recognized Jesus as the Son of God. While the people who were in the crowd had no idea who he was. The, re the reversal raises an interesting question. If you and I would meet Jesus on the street tomorrow, this afternoon, whatever, would we recognize Jesus as the Holy One of God? Now look at the scene that Mark described in the synagogue in Capernaum. Jesus certainly aroused something in the man in the synagogue in Capernaum, and suddenly he screamed at Jesus, What do you want to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And then something happened. Jesus says very sternly, Be quiet and come out of him. And just like that, the evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority? He even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey him. I think the first thing we need to look at this morning is the people didn't know what to do with Jesus. That's, that's pretty well obvious. They didn't know what to do with him. And I believe that sometimes you and I don't know what to do with Jesus at times in our own lives. The response that some of us take to the gospel may be an indication that we really do not know what to make this man either. Now be honest, would you be comfortable if Jesus knocked at your door this morning and was there for a noon meal? Would you be comfortable with Jesus as a guest in your home? What if he asked you while he was there, what are you doing for the poor? What would you do if Jesus asked, how many times did you visit people in need this week? What if he asked you, what about the kind of television programming you were filling, be, filling your brain with? How much time do you actually give to your church? How much time do you spend studying the Word of God? How would that make you feel? Would that make you feel a little uneasy? Would that make you feel confident? Would Jesus actually be welcome in your home? Chuck Swindoll tells about a commercial venture of one of the largest department stores in the nation. This was years ago, and it proved to be disastrously unsuccessful. It proved to be so bad that it was a doll in the form of the baby Jesus. A doll in the form of the baby Jesus. It was advertised as being unbreakable, washable, and of course, cuddly. It was packaged with straw with a stretched satin ribbon and plastic surroundings and appropriate biblical text added here and there to make the whole scene complete. You know what? It didn't sell. The major, the, the, the major scene in the whole thing they tried to create did not sell to people. And the manager goes out of the stores and he's panicked because they weren't selling. What am I going to do with all of this inventory? So he carried out a last stitch promotion trying to sell those dolls. He placed a large sign outside of his store that said, Jesus Christ, mark down 50%. Get it while you can. About this thing in time. We are in the midst of a lot of hardships. We are in the midst of a lot of things we didn't know we were going to have to do. We are having to invent the wheel again at home and in church and at work. How would we feel? What if this is a constant danger that we run into that people don't keep the value of Jesus Christ in their heart where it should be? Many times, by our actions, by what our priorities are, if the value goes down 50%. You know, I don't know what else to say, but you've got to keep putting Jesus first. 
and keep it so much into your life. Make sure that he's standing right next to you and all that you do, every step that you take. You're not alone in this. Yes, we are not able to worship as well as we'd like to and not be able to do the things we want to do in ministry in the community like we have. But we're not alone. We have Jesus there with us, walking with us, talking with us, and helping us through everything that we win. Just like in the text here, Jesus was in the synagogue in Capernaum, and a man passed by with an evil, evil spirit, and he suddenly cried out, What are you going to do with me, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And I hope that you, if you ever got to see him, or something like that, you can say, I know who you are, God. You are the Holy One. You are my Savior. You're the one that I hold on to. Now, the second thing is to say that you and I are confronted with a decision. It's much like the people there at the time that they heard this evil spirit talk, this unclean spirit talk. By saying, what are you and I going to do with Jesus? What shall we do with Jesus? Shall we continue to ignore his claim on our lives? Shall we live as if we had never, ever entered into the world? Or shall we recognize that even the demons acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all life? Be careful how you answer that. For what you see Jesus as he really is, you will never be the same. Because once Jesus is your Savior, your actions are going to be different. Your thinking is going to be different. Your priorities are going to be different. Because Jesus' love becomes dominant in your heart and in your mind. In his book, Finding Hope Again, Roy Fairchild tells about coming to Vienna in Austria. And after a two-week illness in a small Austrian village, he had spent most of his money on medical costs, and his last, his last cent was spraying on a spit on a train to Vienna to try to find his friends that he'd been traveling with. As he was standing on one of the streetcar stations in the center of the city, he was tired, he was hungry, he was discouraged. He, and then at that point, a little old lady came up to him. And she was one of the ladies that would sweep, through, sweep all the trash up in the station. And she came to him and asked him, are you hungry? And before he could answer, he, she, she took out her own lunch from a brown paper bag and gave him half of the lunch. He said he would never forget her actions. That he had never forgotten that face, that he'd never forgotten that act of kindness, and he'd never forgotten that sparkle in her eye. They talked for more than an hour about her life. She was raised in the country on a farm, knowing only hard work. Since then, she had lost her husband to, and, and son to the Renaissance. Only her daughter was surviving. But she said that she was very thankful for so many things. And when asking her why she offered him half her lunch, the lady simply replied, Jesus is my Lord, and God is good. You and I need to wake up each morning and say something like that. Jesus is my Lord, and God is good. And then go out and let other people see the goodness of God in by what you do, what you think, what you say, and how you act. Because she said, Jesus is my Lord. God is good. So, is Jesus your Lord? Once you see Jesus, is he really, you would really either going to hate him for everything that he stands for, or you will be willing to give your life to Jesus. Because you love him so much. It's your decision. What will it be? How are you going to respond to the call of Jesus in your life? Amen.